Welcome back to Primetime News. And again, a special welcome if you're watching online at onespotmedia.com. The government today moved to extend the yearly multi-billion dollar drawdown from the National Housing Trust, NHT, for another five years. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark presented the proposal as one of three bills aimed at cushioning the economic impact of the COVID pandemic. But it raised several questions about the finances at the NHT. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark indicated to Parliament that three bills would be tabled to aid economic recovery from the COVID pandemic without increasing debt. The first, an amendment to extend the annual $11.4 billion drawdown from the NHT over the COVID recovery period. The original bill was tabled in 2013 by the then PNP administration and was extended in 2016 by the GLP government to expire in March of 2021. The proposed $57 billion extension drew questions from the opposition. The minister said that it isn't impacting the housing market to do that. But I don't see how it can be possibly said that taking that level of resources out of the National Housing Trust doesn't weaken the trust's ability to address those supply side issues. Dr. Clark insists that Jamaica's housing problem is a shortage of affordable solutions, not a lack of resources. The 11 billion in on itself doesn't solve that person's problem. The point I'm making is that the that problem is solved by attacking the market failure and the supply side, which will require resources. However, you have a lot to do before you come to resources. Julian Robinson questioned the move, suggesting that at least one contractor had to seek funding elsewhere because the trust couldn't afford to lend. I can't speak to it definitively, but with respect to the joint finance program, huh? Is there a cash flow challenge at the NHT? Even from my time as chairman, there were efforts, negotiations, even from then. So it's not, not, it's not something that was done today because of a cash flow need. From when I was chairman, those discussions started. The second bill seeks to amend the Financial Administration and Audit Act for a more gradual approach to correcting fiscal deviation due to the pandemic. The third is for the creation of an independent fiscal commission to, among other things, enhance the accountability of the policy-making process and increasing transparency of government finances.